Hi, Chad Osmus here, your friendly Balsa USA builder. I'm going to show you how we do our hinges, our barn door hinges. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the tools that I use. Um, I use a couple of homemade tools. I'll explain how to make those, make them out of parts that you probably have laying around your house. Um, so let's take a look at the tools that we use. Um, obviously the, the Exacto knife with the number 11 blade. And then we have our homemade tool, which is, uh, I call it a, a hinge slaughter. Um, the advantage of this is it uses a little thicker blade um, and it's perfect for the thickness of the hinge that you put in. Um, to make this, you just use a standard stock part, part number 748. It's our uh, uh, motor mount, uh, 3 8 by 3 quarter by 12 motor mount. You can get three handles out of it. Um, just cut a slit in it. You know, and here's one that I have. I sanded it a little bit so that it doesn't feel sharp on your hand or anything, a little nicer shape. And then uh, most everybody has hacksaw blades laying around. A lot of times you have bad ones and the teeth are, are going bad in just one spot because if you're like me, you do small little strokes. Um, so you still have good areas to use and you can see, just cut a slit in there and you can slide the blade in. And then just mark where you wanna cut um, I found it's easiest if you have a long angled part on and then if you also take the tip and you file it sharp on the tip that allows it to slide in a lot easier. You'll see that when I actually start doing it on the wing. But you can cut that with just a simple cut off wheel on your Dremel tool. Cut that. I'm not going to take the time to do it in the video. Um, but also you can make them, if you get the big piece of wood, you can make a couple handles and they have different teeth. Um, fine tooth and, and a coarse tooth. This is an 18 tooth. This I think is like a 32, yeah, 32 tooth. And that's how many teeth are in one inch of the blade. Um, I like to use the coarser one, me personally, but you may find that you like to use the thinner one. Um, so I'll move this stuff aside. We'll start talking about the hinging process a little bit. <clears throat> On most all of our plans, you're gonna get a diagram of how the hinges work. We use the barn door style hinges. Um, we get a lot of people that uh, they don't completely understand what we're talking about here, so I'm going to describe it. Um, right here is the hinge, and uh, you can see it goes down into the angled parts at an angle. If you look on my wing here, you can see what we're talking about. And now, on bigger airplanes that are normally going to use the bigger hinges, you're going to have normally 330 seconds cap strips. Um, that. 330 seconds, if you start right at the bottom of the cap strip there with your angle, that's going to put your hinge a little deeper down in. So once it's all finished, you get a nice clean look on the top instead of the actual hinge sticking out above. When you're using the smaller style hinges like this is normally on a smaller plane and chances are they're using like a 16th cap strip. And that's going to give you It'll raise it up a little bit because, but because you're using a smaller hinge, it's about the right depth that you want to be into your hinge to keep it looking nice. Um, you notice I take and I mark my hinges on both sides where it's going to be. Um, and then when I'm setting up, just to give you an idea, I'll put the knife at an angle and I'll be cutting down at an angle like this or so. And it doesn't matter if you're at the exact angle that's shown. Um, just so long as you're getting down into the meat here and then the same thing on this one You know you can bring it down at an angle like that if it's at an angle like that It's not too big of a deal or one like that just so long as it's at an angle getting into the wood there um, So the first thing I do after I have it marked I'll take and right on where that seam is I'll just put it down my knife down that gets it started. We'll go in from a different view here. And you can see the angle that it's in is matching fairly close to the angle that I have drawn there. And all the knife is doing is getting a start for you to put your, your hinge cutter in. So I'll pull that out, get it on a flat here. Now I'll take this and slide that in on the same spot. Now that's the advantage of having this sharpened a little bit and this long angle allows that to slide in a lot easier than if you're trying to put a real thick part in at one time. And you just slowly work it down and it takes a little bit to work it in. Pull it out. But once you get going, you just follow the bottom of that cap strip there.
Then I get to the end, I'll go back the other way just to make sure it's all the way. Now you can see my hinge is cut in there and you can sand it and it'll look a little nicer. You can see these ones are already sanded. Um, so you do that and then the hinge slides down in at the angle nicely and you notice once it's all the way in and I put it at an angle, you'll see it's sitting at just the right height to just be below the top of the surface so that you're not seeing the, the hinge part once you have the wing finished. Um, so now I'll do the same thing to this one and right at the, the bottom edge of that, uh, that cap strip, I'll shove the knife down in at the angle and you can see how far it comes out in the back. <clears throat> Pull that out, use my hinge tool and I'll do the same thing. Now that's cut. <clears throat> now I'll grab the, the aileron and I'll plug this all in here. And this can be a little tedious at times trying to get it in, but uh, it goes in fairly easy. That's the advantage of having the thicker blade. It cuts the proper um, thickness slot for the hinge as opposed to uh, some of the hinging tools that are out there. Um, aren't necessarily made for the real thick hinges like this. So now I got them all started and you just slowly work it in here. Now you'll see how well it works. You get about 60 degrees is what we set that you can put down. That's way more than you're ever going to need. And you'll see that it bottoms out eventually, but that's plenty of throw in the up position. But the advantage is how clean it looks on the top edge there. You don't see the hinges sticking up. Um, it just makes for a, a much neater process, much neater uh, um, finish at the end. And you're always looking at the top of the wing, so the barn door style is great. You can do the V-shaped ones, and I do those on some sport planes, but on the scale ones, I try to keep it looking as neat as possible. And, you wouldn't want a big gap going across the top here. This just minimizes all that, makes it look as nice as possible. Um, once again, if you guys have uh, any other questions on things that you'd like to see us do, things that you may not understand completely on how we do it, we'd love to be able to explain it to you. Let us know what you want to see, and we'll make it happen. Till next time, have fun building.